Hi, so this is Required Practical 3. Um, it's looking at one of the variables that can affect the rate of reaction, temperature. So we're going to be doing the reaction, well, I'm just going to talk you through it, between hydrochloric acid and sodium thiosulfate. So the product you get produced is the sulfur, which would end up giving you sort of a cloudy solution at the end. But we'll talk through the full thing. So initially, you're going to have some water in here. You would have about 10 cubic centimetres of one molar HCl in here. And 10 cubic centimetres of about 0.05 molar sodium thiosulfate in there. So you'd have a Bunsen under here. You would heat your solution up until the appropriate temperature. So 25, 35, 45, 55. You don't have to be exact, so if you get to 50 and you're a bit bored, you can take it out and do it then. As long as you've got a few readings. Try not to do it at the very high temperatures though, because you do get some sulfur dioxide emitted from this reaction, and obviously higher temperatures are going to pump it out more. So in a well ventilated room, it's not really going to be too much of a problem. It is slightly toxic to breathe in, but it'll disperse quick enough. If you've got asthma or something like that, then yeah, you might want to do it in a fume cupboard before you start coughing your guts up. Right, so I've got my Bunsen under here. Water bath, just so I'm not heating them up directly. And we would heat them up, say 35 degrees Celsius. I would stop, I would take them out then. Just got the clamp sedge for obvious things, just adding a bit more balance to the boiling tube since I've got thermometers in them. So if I've got the 10 cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid in here, I would pour that into a conical flask. What I would do, take the starting temperature of that. I would then take my 10 cubic centimetres of the sodium thiosulfate, I would have a stopwatch or stop clock ready and I would pour that 10 cubic centimetres into there and start mixing. What I would be looking for, as I said, the sulphur is going to form. The sulphur would turn the solution cloudy. I would not be able to look down and see the black cross on the paper underneath. So when that happens, I hit stop on the stop clock, record the time and I also record the temperature, what it finished at. So the reason why is obviously you're going to have heat loss from this and you can take the average of your start and end temperature to let you know the average of what the reaction took place at. So it just kind of counters a little bit of the heat loss. And what you can do with that, so if you repeat this at different temperatures, so get a new batch of 10 cubic centimetres of each of them, put them in there, do it at say 45 Celsius now rather than the 35 before, repeat, 10 in there, 10 in there, see how long it takes to go cloudy. What you should be able to do, something like this. Now you know rate of reaction, change of concentration over change in time. Our change in concentration is going to be the same for all of these because we're using the same amounts of them. So we can kind of ignore that. So rate is going to be proportional to 1 over the change in time. So this is why on your y-axis you've got 1 over time. So if it took a minute for the, the 35 to go, just go 1 over 60. If it took 40 seconds for the 50 Celsius one to go, 1 over 40. So you would plot those against your temperature and what you should quite clearly be able to see is that the higher temperatures would have a faster rate of reaction. Um, that's it for required practical three.